current estimates hold, the population will reach 9 billion by 2038. One of the major problems we face is feeding everyone. Diseases are at an all-time high. The current model for food production is unhealthy and unsustainable. There's got to be a better way. Scientists say that if 14% of the world planted a permaculture garden or some type of garden just in their backyard, we can replenish the entire earth. So we're setting out to find people who are doing things differently. We'll be looking into alternatives to current food practices that are damaging our health and environment. We'll be meeting the chefs, farmers, restaurateurs, and entrepreneurs who are making a difference. And you'll find out just how easy it is for you to become a part of the solution. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Hit that like button, subscribe, tell all your friends. We'll be eating the freshest food, meeting amazing people, and seeing what we can do to become a healthier, more environmentally friendly world right here on The Fork and Truth. Average of two hurricanes hitting the coast of Florida per year, it's a challenge for residents to grow their own food locally. But stick around because on this episode, we're visiting a place that's fighting back. It was a tropical fruit oasis here in Big Pine Key. Uh, we have two acres of tropical fruit. Uh, it's a very rare and unique piece of property. About 200 different species of tropical fruit were grown here. It all started actually uh, many years ago uh, by an inventor, a uh, recluse uh, inventor from Michigan. He was always passionate about growing food and decided to buy this pine land. And basically uh, a lot of big pines is full of pine trees. And he just got rid of the pine and created his own Garden of Eden. Things were kind of happening. People were getting interested into this place from all over. PBS specials about the property and et cetera, et cetera. Then on September 10th, category form storm Irma hit Big Pine Key directly. It was complete devastation. I stayed for the storm. I wanted to be here after the storm to just try to save the trees, especially the rare stuff that can't be replaced. And it was a pretty tough few days because the storm was so bad that everything got destroyed. Even the stuff that I had planned for the uh, Armageddon aftermath, you know, my extra generators and the car that was in the flood proof area, you know, all this kind of stuff, but everything was wiped out. And luckily, um, so far about, out of the rare collection, the historic and rare collection I've saved, you know, 80% of that. It's still up for grabs whether more will die. We had salt water, and that was the worst part, is that salt water is not good for the tree. Hopefully, uh, they'll come back, but um, you know, some of these rare trees, uh, we, don't, we don't know yet. The one thing I always said about this property is it's the foundation that makes it so special. And it's what Grimmel created, the, the raised garden bed and these waterways that make it so unique. And a lot of this stuff would be very hard to recreate in this day and age with all the permitting and things like that. It would be, you know, it would be almost, it would be impossible to do. I'm committed to, to at least bringing it back and hopefully get that momentum back and carry on this local food mission here in the Florida Keys. This pit here is, is basically what this whole property looks like. It's all raised garden beds. Uh, Grimmel, he loved to dynamite and he loved to uh, pour concrete, two of his favorite things to do in life. Over here we got what's called a balimbi and it's struggling. This here is a jabaticaba. This is from Brazil and it's like a tree grape. Delicious fruit and you make wine from it, kind of has a grape flavor to it. So this is actually doing pretty good. So this is the one that I went to the Peruvian Amazon in search of. It's in no botanical book or any online resource aside from basically what I've been writing. Really cool tree, hopefully we'll bring it back. If not, maybe it's another trip to the Amazon. This here is a breadfruit and this is an Irma survivor here. But breadfruit's a very rare tree in the United States. Uh, really, we're the only zone, uh, the Florida Keys, where you can grow breadfruit. Even Miami gets a little too cold. 
And right here, this tree that's blown over here, you actually can see some flowers up there. Um, for the first time, we, have, we got some flowers, uh, but that's pretty exciting. This is a mango tree. But anyways, it's still alive and it's coming back. Uh, there's a carambola and you'll see the fruit on this. It's amazing to see how uh, resilient nature is. This is cacao here, this is where chocolate comes from. We had about eight cacao trees here and we were doing a lot of chocolate workshops. We had a chocolatier producing some chocolate from us. And this is one that I really love, this tree right here. It's called an alupeg, related to the lychee and the longan. This right here, this is a white sapote. Sapote means, it's like an Aztec word meaning uh, small squishy fruit. You actually can see uh, fruit on here now. So I mean, look how vibrant this tree is after a Cat 4 hurricane. It looks almost like nothing has happened to it. This is my outdoor shower. So much for top, I'm gonna to be able to harvest while I shower. So, you know, you can't beat that harvesting tomatoes while you shower. I mean, the nice thing is people want Grimmel Grove to survive. It's just whether or not it can, you know, based on all the bureaucracy and the just money. As cool as something is, I've learned uh, it's all about numbers. <laughs> What can people do who are watching this or just in general to help you guys out? There's a nonprofit that's associated with this property and that the whole goal for the nonprofit is to allow this place to be open to the community. All right, whether it be education or, or come in for a tour or, you know, that whole concept, that's the role of the nonprofit. Setting up a, probably a GoFundMe page to fund the fence that would be a dollar to dollar match since we're gonna get reimbursed for the stuff. We're gonna start doing volunteer days and that'll be on the website. and. Mostly, our website sometimes is a little dated, but Facebook and, and um, Instagram, both Grimmel Grove, uh, you type in Grimmel Grove and you'll get the information about it, um, is, is two good ways to uh, follow us. And what does Grimmel Grove mean to me? It's my life, it's my passion. It encompasses food justice, uh, food security, community, local history, conservation, research, it's not just a botanical garden, you know, it's not just a farm. It's got this magic, and for this world to survive, we gotta, we gotta keep the magic. Mm -hmm.